Hello, I'm Bill Peek. Welcome to Advanced Technology Diagnostics. This program was developed by Dr. Norman Knoll and myself over the past four or five years. We did it for two reasons. First, it's been widely used for years. In fact, what you're looking at right now is a cylinder head off our Honda VTEC, which uses variable valve lift. It's one of the technologies we're going to talk about. But we're going to talk about variable valve timing as well. This is a V8 using variable valve timing, and we're going to be talking about some of the things that are happening with it. Variable valve control is an overall view of timing and lift. We're going to break it down and talk about the different operations of variable valve timing because that was first introduced a number of years ago. We're going to identify the advantages and disadvantages of the different systems in use and to show you why they're evolving. And then we're going to show you the final evolution and discuss the operation of variable valve lift. I'm sure you've heard something about variable valve lift. If not, it does eliminate the throttle plate and does reduce manifold vacuum to practically zero. And we use the intake valve to set engine speed. All of this technology is going to show us how to get to a different four cycle operation. Yes, with variable valve control, variable valve lift and timing included in that, high pressure direct gasoline injection into the cylinder, about 2900 PSI, we're going to find a way to use a different four cycle operation. It's not going to be the auto cycle and it's not going to be the diesel cycle. All made possible by this. Why is all this being driven? Well, the California Air Resources Board did a study on which new vehicle technologies were best suited to reduce fuel consumption, important thing right now, and reduce greenhouse gases. And they wanted improved vehicle performance at the same time. Improved vehicle performance makes smaller displacement engines more attractive to the motors. This is one of the prime directives, along with the other important objectives. Now, there are other factors to be included. Emissions are becoming tighter and tougher particularly on diesel engines in California. Diesels in California and in the U.S. are going to be make it very difficult getting by the NOx and the particulate matter emissions. We always need power. We're going to show you why we need more power, more torque. And fuel economy, we know there's much tougher fuel economy standards coming. And all of these have an implementation cost that are also important factors. Here is what California CERB thinks. Control the in and out of the air and the fuel is a viable solution that gives us performance, power, economy, low emissions, all at the same time. Let's look at their WIST list. This was published by CERB several years back. You can see their logo at the bottom. One of the top priorities they see is gasoline direct injection, 2900 PSI. It's already in use. GM, Ford, in their version, Dimler Chrysler, now it's just Chrysler, maybe Chrysler Fiat, Toyota BMW, and Nissan are using this. Direct injection along with turbine charging gives us a lot more power, more air, better control of fuel. That is already in use. And 100% of the manufacturers all have variable valve controls. That's where we're going to start a discussion. Why are all these technologies so important? Well, one of the things they see that's important is a six-speed automatic transmission. In order to fully utilize a six-speed transmission, you need a high-torque engine. And we have cylinder deactivation at the bottom, a prime thing. We currently have GM, Chrysler, and Honda utilizing these and have been for a number of years. So let's get started with variable valve timing and see the evolution of where it's come from and where it's going.